Welcome to my summer practice journal, week number eight. So for this week, I'm doing a little bit of traveling, going back down to Austin and grabbing the stuff out of my apartment that's still there, um, just because I'm moving out and moving into a new one. So I will be going down there on a travel day on Wednesday. I'll be there Thursday, Friday, and then we'll be traveling back up here on Saturday. So I probably won't practice on Wednesday or Saturday just because after the three and a half, four hour drive, it's a little bit much to practice and I get a little bit tired. It just wouldn't be a productive practice, so to say. I'm going to try and practice at least once on Thursday or Friday, so we'll see what happens when I get down there. So this week might be a little bit shorter with only four or five days of practice. I still want to be productive and get things done, so I'm going to keep going with the double tonguing at 120 because I still don't feel very good about it. I want to keep at getting that back syllable even better than it is. I'm also going to move on to lacor number 23, but we will probably continue that for week number 9 as well, just so I can get that up to a reasonable tempo. I'm also going to do the Rachmaninoff symphonic dances, lyrical excerpts, and then I'll finish it off by continuing work on Liberation by Joel Love. I hope you enjoy watching, let's get to work. Today I decided to play on some cane reeds, so for my warm up I am playing on Diderio 3 pluses. I find that with the 3 pluses I have a lot of flexibility, especially in the low, low range. It feels a lot easier to play at quieter dynamics and I'm just able to get a better response out of the low range than I would if I was using a 3.5 or a uh, 3.75 Legere or 4 Legere. One of the downsides though is that when I go from playing the Legere or a little bit of a tougher read, um, I can pretty much blow and it doesn't make any sound because I'm so used to using so much air, but if I were to like start on this read, it's a lot better and it's something that I might be able to get used to but it's not necessarily the tone quality that I love, but it definitely has its advantages over a stronger read. If you've watched previous practice journals, I'm doing a different sort of scale routine than I'm used to. Usually I go chromatically through a certain uh, mode of scale, so um, like major, full range, um, in thirds, but now I'm selecting a certain pitch each day, so today is A flat concert or my F, and I'm going through all the different modes of scales that I know, so I'm doing full range majors, full range um, harmonic minors, uh, two octave melodic minor, full range thirds, full range harmonic minor thirds, full range fourths, and full range harmonic minor fourths. I usually start at a very slow tempo, around 60 to 80 depending on the scale, and then I like to do different articulation patterns, especially all tongue, because I'm very used to uh, slurring all of my scales, which is good for the fingers, um, especially keeping those in line, but it's also important to do articulation work to keep it in line with the tongue, and just to uh, provide some variance. I finished out this day by working through the first page of Lacour number 23, which this one was a lot of fun. There's a lot of different patterns in it, and it, these are getting easier and easier as I go through the book just because I'm getting the process down. It's all about a process and figuring out the steps that you're going to attack the, a new piece of work. So for this one, I start really slow, I do very small chunks, and it's a lot of writing down fingerings, and then as you hear now, I did a full run at, I think, 50.
this is an exercise out of the chops book um, it you put on a drone and then you go through the fifth and the tonic in that key um, through the full range of the horn this is uh, very helpful for figuring out the intonation of your instrument just figuring out what tendencies and I'm using a lot of quartet fingerings one of my favorite middle C fingerings is 2 3 G sharp so it's just cool things you can find when you're using a tuner For double tonguing today, I wanted to start a little bit slower. I think I started at about 80. And I just wanted to work on clarifying that back syllable just because I've had a little bit of trouble with that recently. This is a Longinus uh, clarinet etude that I like to go through. I did this a long time ago with my private lesson teacher while we were doing all state etudes to work on single tonguing, but it also works well for uh, double tonguing and you can do it in any key. And then just like yesterday, today I went through the second page of Lacour number 23 and then I ended with a full run at I think 60 BPM. I then went on to work through the military band excerpt for the week, which is Rachmaninoff's Symphonic Dances. This one I have touched a little bit before, but it's all about getting your air through the intervals and starting the vibrato instantly. And then if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this clip from Joel Loves Liberation. This is the very end. Today we're in a bit of a new location, back at BSOM since I'm back down in Austin doing a little bit of packing up my stuff for my apartment since I'm moving out and moving into a different apartment for next year. Um, there might be a video on that soon, so stay tuned. Here I did some improv. I turned on a drone um, on A, and then I just did some improv on F sharp minor. There are a few little Easter eggs if you can hear them. I think improv is really valuable, especially to us classical musicians since we don't do that a whole lot. Just turn on a drone and create a cool tune.
And then if you've tuned into the series before, this is my usual single tonguing exercise where I take a two octave scale and use the automated bump up tempo feature in tonal energy. And I like to tongue a constant uh, pitch for the first four counts where I'm just making sure I'm taking my tongue and putting it in the spot that I want to. And then I want to keep that consistent as I go up and down the scale. Especially when we get down to E, D, and low C, than I am when we get up to like uh, octave A, B, and C. Those are really hard, especially to keep the voicing in the right spot. I found that recently that I do better when I sort of engage my core a lot. This just keeps the air steady and allows for my tongue to do most of the work. I then did some more work on the Rachmaninoff Symphonic Dances excerpt. This is just another phrase that I'm working on. After today, I started to feel a lot better about Joel Love's Liberation. This uh, end section is pretty difficult with all of the little brim things. It changes keys every single time, and then there's a little sextuplet run into the next key. And it's pretty difficult and just something I needed to grind out. After Joel Love's Liberation, I went through some more of the first page of the Lacour number 23 just because I hadn't looked at that since Monday. I finally arrived back home yesterday, and since it was very tiring, unpacking the car um, is very hot here in Texas, um, decided to take the rest of the day off and continue work on Sunday. So here we are. Here I tried to start my bass tempo for double tonguing up just a little bit. I think I started at 100 instead of previous days I've started at 80. Um, it felt pretty good today, but I think I still want to keep working at this tempo just because I don't feel very confident. Maybe next week we'll go up to maybe 126, 128, something around that region. And then here's one of my favorite exercises out of the chops book. It's a finger dexterity exercise just for the left hand. I think there's also ones for the right hand, but the left hand work is really tough, especially using the short tube D, E flat, and uh, E. The 
Then the next few clips are me chunking the core number 23. I feel pretty good about this. I'm at 90 BPM to finish off this week, but we're going to continue working on it next week. Um, but I'm able to run through each chunk up until like a rest. There's like built-in phrasings. It's usually about two lines. To finish off today, I did some more Rachmaninoff symphonic dances, just one of the other phrases. I think next week we're going to be able to put them all together and have a good run of this. We're just going to have to work on endurance and dexterity, especially with breathing. Since we only had four days of practice this week, I'm going to continue working on my goals from this week in next week's week nine. I hope to see you there. Peace.